The title of this morning's sermon is These Days and The Day. These Days and The Day. I want to start off with a question. It's very simple. How do you measure and how do you mark time? How do you measure and mark time? Most people measure and mark time with their calendars. They think about days and weeks. They think about months and years. And a perfect example of this is us going from New Year's Eve in 2021 to New Year's Day in 2022. Many people measure time in terms of stages or stretches or seasons in life. Some of you, you are now in college. You're living the college life. Others of us are living the married life. And still others, the married life with kids life. And then there's work life. There's life after retirement. Life with grandkids, hopefully. And the list goes on and on. This is how we measure our time. And many of us, many people, mark time in terms of schedules, events, appointments, deadlines. We set up hangout dates. We prepare movie nights. We get ready for interviews. We study for tests. We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. And we look forward to things like weddings, graduations, newborn babies, and we can't wait for things like, I don't know, watching a championship game or getting that new product that we've been waiting to buy. And the list goes on and on. How do we measure and mark time? For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we measure and we mark time with far greater things. How do we measure time as Christians? We measure time with the Lord's Day. And we live our lives one week at a time. Each and every Sunday, on the first day of the week, We set the day apart as the Lord's Day, and we officially worship God together. And so our lives are centered on and anchored upon and marked and measured with the day, the day in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from the dead. If you're wondering why do we celebrate, why do we do church on Sundays, the first day of the week? Because Jesus rose on this day. It used to be Saturday, Old Testament style. This is how we measure time. And strangely, it takes time to realize that. <laughs> how do we mark time as Christians? We mark time in accordance with redemptive history, with covenant history, with God's salvation history. Right now, we are living in the last days. These days, they're happening right now. But these days will lead up to, these days will stop at the day. These days will lead up to and stop at the day of the Lord. And right now, whether you believe it or not, this day, the day of the Lord, the ultimate day of the Lord, not just Sundays. This day is the most important day of your life. Really. Today's passage is an account of Jesus shepherding his people. Jesus taught his people the truth about these last days. And he taught them the truth about the day when he will return in judgment. And Jesus did this because he loved his people. And this morning, as we meditate upon God's word, this passage, 
Jesus loves us as well. He wants us to be prepared for the day of his return, for the day of the Lord's, day of the Lord. And he wants us to get ready now in these last days. Brothers and sisters, think about this. Recalibrate your mind to start thinking in God's timetables. As of today, January 2nd, 2022, Jesus already took on human nature. This was a long time ago. He already obeyed. He already fulfilled the law. He already lived his perfect life of righteousness that has now been credited to us so that we could have eternal life. As of today, January 2nd, 2022, you do realize Jesus' humiliation is finished. He's accomplished it. He already suffered it fully. He already has been rejected by the generation who lived during his earthly ministry. That, has, that time has passed. It's done. As of January 2nd, 2022, right now, he already, Jesus already gave his body he already shed his blood. He died on the cross 2,000 years ago as a sacrificial atonement for our sins. And he already received the hell of wrath and judgment. He already satisfied justice. And as of January 2nd, 2022, in case you've forgotten, Jesus already rose from the dead with resurrection power and glory. And he has already ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Here's my point. Jesus already did all of this historic work for our salvation. And now, in these last days, we're waiting for one more thing. That's it. We're waiting for the day when he returns, when he comes in judgment, when he brings us in, literally, physically, into the kingdom of the new heavens and the new earth. Brothers, sisters, the war, the war has been won. It's not a matter now of if, it's a matter now of just when. When Jesus, the Son of Man, will be revealed. What will happen on that day when Jesus comes back? For the rest of this sermon, let's meditate upon that gospel truth and let's listen carefully. And I'm taking a lot now from the Westminster Confession of Faith. So what's going to happen on this day when Jesus comes back? On this day, a day which God the Father has appointed, scheduled, marked, on this day, Jesus, the Son of God, he will judge the world in righteousness. On that day, all the fallen apostate and angels will be judged. And every human being that has ever lived on this earth will appear, will stand before the throne of Christ. Why? To give an account of their thoughts, their words, their deeds, and to receive according to what they have done in the body, whether good or evil. Every human being. Thankfully for us who are in Christ, we will be saved on that day as we are saved fully now. On that day, the day of the Lord, God's mercy will be fully revealed. God's mercy and the eternal salvation of the elect. But also on that day, God's justice will be fully revealed. 
God's justice in the damnation of those who do not repent, those who are wicked, those who are disobedient against Christ Jesus. And on that day, the righteous will go into everlasting life. They will receive that fullness of joy and refreshing which shall come from the presence of the Lord. And on that day, the wicked who know not God, who do not obey the gospel of Jesus, they will be cast into eternal torments. They will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his power. Highland, all of this is true. This is what is going to happen on the day when Jesus returns. Which, by the way, is, again, the most important day of your life. You know what the funny thing is? The most important day of your life, we don't know when that day is coming. So that means one thing. We must prepare now, and we must be ready today. We do not know where we're at in this countdown. There is a countdown happening right now, for this day has been scheduled. It's been marked. It's been appointed. God's not sitting up there in heaven saying to himself, ah, we'll see. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how this world you know, unfolds. Let me think about it. No. It's been appointed. The day is set. Nothing can change that day. Nothing can delay it or hasten it. Nothing can erase it. The day is coming. We don't know where we are in the countdown to that day, so we must prepare for it and be ready. I hope, Highland, that you are looking forward to this day, to seeing Jesus face to face, to entering the kingdom of the new heavens and the new earth, to standing before the throne of Christ and being vindicated, being saved on that day. But again, we don't know when this will happen. So until then, we prepare, we get ready for it, we look forward to it, as crazy as that sounds. This is the big picture. This is what our lives really come down to. This is what it's all about, the most important day of our lives. Now, thankfully, in today's passage, Jesus tells us what to look for, so to speak, and what to do in light of this day, in light of his return. So first, what do we look for? Well, Highland, it says, Jesus says that his return will be very clear and it will be instant and it will be unmistakable. His return will be like a flash of lightning that lights up the entire night sky, going from darkness, if you've ever seen lightning just light it up, going from darkness to like, bright light. That's how the day of the Lord is going to come. Now, this is very important because you know what this means? This means that you will know. So we don't know when this day is going to come, but when it comes, you will know. And that's important. Nobody will have to tell you that it happened. You will not need to turn on the TV and check the news you will not need to text me or Pastor Peter or anyone else here at church, hey, is this the day of the Lord? I'm not sure. <laughs> no. When Jesus comes back, you will know, everyone will know, the whole world will know. So if someone comes up to you in these last days and says, hey, look, there's Jesus, don't follow them. I'm not going to waste time giving you examples of people who say this stuff, but there are people who say this stuff. There are people who predict, hey, Jesus is coming back on this day. 
let's not, you don't need to follow them. Jesus will not return quietly or in secret as if other people know the secrets to all this and you don't, and so you got to find out. You don't need to worry about that. Jesus, he will return clearly, instantly, unmistakably. The whole world will know. And there's some mystery to this. Like, how is, how is the whole entire planet Earth going to see it all at the same time? How are we in Chicago and then people in oh, New Zealand, for example? How are, how are everyone going to see Jesus return at the same time? Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to be so obvious. And that's the main point. And so, in other words, there's actually nothing for you to look for. Christ is coming to look for you for us as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other so will the son of man be in his day so that's number one what what to look for so to speak but secondly and perhaps more importantly what do we do what do we do about this day what do we do now well highland since we know that jesus is returning we know that that day, that day is scheduled, it's coming. We don't know when, though, it is. We need to be ready. And we cannot turn back from this glorious day. Jesus says in this text, today's passage, that his return will be like the stories of Noah and Lot. Now, I don't have time to go through these stories in depth, but you know Noah, he built the ark. The flood was an act of God's judgment, and the waters destroyed everything on this earth. But those in the ark lived, so that's the story of Noah in a nutshell. Lot, similarly, he lived in a city. That city was wicked. He was spared. He escaped the, uh, the wrath of God as he threw down fire and judgment upon that city and destroyed everyone there. That's Lot's story. Well, judgment came for the neighbors of Noah, for the people of Lot's city, Sodom and Gomorrah, but they were not ready. Noah and Lot, according to 2 Peter 2, they were calling people to repent, but the people didn't listen to them. They didn't listen to God. They didn't repent. They didn't believe. Instead, what were they just doing? These are not wrong things in and of, them, of themselves. They were eating, they were drinking, they were getting married. They were buying things and selling stuff and planting vineyards and building stuff. And they were basically doing their own thing. But not Noah, not Lot. Noah, and can you imagine his neighbors watching him do this and laughing at him? Noah built the ark and Lot very messed up story people bothering him the Lot ran away from his city city on the most important day of their lives on the day of God's judgment they were ready we must be ready too. When Jesus Christ returns in judgment, you must be ready on that day. And since we don't know when that day is, Highland, every day you must be ready. That's the Christian life. That's what we mean when we say, remember the big picture. This is a marathon. You must be focused every day every week do you really not think that jesus can come back this week i'm scared i'm sad i worry that some of us if not many of us in this church we actually don't believe it or we just forget it or we know but we don't care or we hope that he won't come back or we bet that he won't. I'm not saying that we just drop everything literally and then like monks just wait. 
you got to still pay your bills, mow the lawn, you got to plan for stuff. But overriding that, transcending that every day. And Highland, you know my style of pastoring and preaching. I don't, I don't think I've ever told you to do something every day. But today I am. Every single day, you must be ready. The Bible describes the Christian life as like being a watchman on a watchtower. And a, and a good watchman, a true watchman, is watching every moment. Vigilant. For if just one moment they are not and the enemy strikes, then the tower crumbles, the city f- can fall. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Every day is Christian life. And so start today. Start today and be in a more alert posture. Practice this posture of alertness, of readiness, of preparedness. Start today and do not delay. It's time that we become people who are really waiting and really looking forward to Jesus' return and really mean it so that we are not like Noah's neighbors or like people in Lot City, where we are just doing our own thing, eating, drinking, getting married, building stuff, planting vineyards, living our own lives, but forgetting the gospel of Jesus, forgetting that Jesus, our King, is coming. This big picture story, history, which is not our story, but His story. Start today, Highland. I beg of you, Let's do this and let's not delay. Let's renew our approach as we live in these last days. Let's read our Bibles. Let's pray more and more, growing in faith, and of course, inviting other people to repent and believe in Jesus. Be ready. Jesus also tells us to not turn back. And he talks about Lot's wife. Lot's wife, she ran away with Lot, but the sad thing about her is that she turned around. As she was running away with Lot, she looked back at the city. And that was a tragedy for her. It turns out that her heart, her treasure, was in the things of this world. She looked back. She turned back. She wanted to gain the world. And as a result, she forfeited and lost herself. And you know how her story ends. She came under God's judgment. She died with the rest of the city because she turned back. Brothers and sisters, please do not overthink what I'm about to say next. Don't overthink this. If you turn back, you're not going to make it you will die. Jesus says, whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. Brothers and sisters, with fear and with trembling, let us work out our salvation. If you are tempted, if you are tried in life, don't turn around. Don't look back. Keep going forward. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I know that this world is so nice. We like the things of this world, but we must not become worldly. Brothers and sisters, let us not compromise our faith. Let us not love anything or anyone more than God. This is very hard to hear, but this includes things like your families, your friends, your very own children, your jobs, your achievements, your stuff, of course, but anything, if you love it more than God. That's turning away. And so be warned. 
Do not turn away from the Lord. Dear Highland, do not be distracted. Every week we are reminded powerfully at church in worship. The challenge, though, is that Monday through Saturday we can be easily distracted by things on our calendars, by how we mark time in our worldliness and perhaps even in our sinfulness. Brothers and sisters, do not be distracted and do not be influenced by non-Christian friends or thinking. I'm not saying don't be friends with them, but I'm saying don't be influenced by them. We're, we're supposed to influence them, not them, us. Highland, please, please do not be caught up in your own universe or get lost in your own multiverse. Please do not suffocate in your own metaverse. This world is quite literally amusing itself to death. We don't do that. We are renewing ourselves unto life in Christ. No turning back. Let's get ready for the day of the Lord. Let's get our affairs in order. Let's get our house in order. Let's get our life in order. Let's read our Bibles like there's no tomorrow. Let's pray like there's no tomorrow. Let's have fellowship. Let's talk to one another and love one another like there's no tomorrow. Highland, we have a wonderful thing going here, but we've got a lot of things to work on. And if we don't get ourselves ready, now that another year has passed, we are not just one week closer to Jesus, we are one year closer to Jesus' return, are we really ready? Are we a church that is ready? In many ways, I think we are. And in my humble, humble opinion, I think, I believe in many, many ways, we as a church and many of us as individuals, if not all of us to certain extents, because none of us are perfect, we are not ready and that is not what our king has commanded us to do our treasures are in heaven not on earth we are not to do our own thing we are here to do god's thing in these days jesus says quote i tell you in that night there will be two in one bed one will be taken the other left there will be two women grinding together working some sort of doing some work with food they're grinding stuff one will be taken the other left when jesus comes back what that means is he's going to gather his people into his kingdom there will be a distinction a separation and those who did not repent those who do not believe in jesus will be left they will not enter the kingdom they will face judgment they will suffer a second and eternal death in hell forever. For where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. There will be death when Jesus comes back. And as Christians, we should be heartbroken and extremely motivated to hope that that will not happen to the people that we think about, that we love, that we care about, they should compel us to evangelize, to do gospelization, to go on mission, so to speak, to talk about Jesus, to call people to repent and believe in Jesus. To tell them about these days and the day, the day of the Lord.
You know, this world likes to count down to the new year. And so it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year. Apparently that's a thing. But Highland, let us mark and let us measure our time on this earth with the countdown of heaven, with the countdown of Christ Jesus, his day. And so I close by asking you, what are you counting down to in your life? How do you measure, how do you mark your time? Which, trick question, is not really your time. It's these days, the days of the Son of Man, which leads up to the day of the Lord. Psalm 90, verse 12. Let us number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, but encouraging one another as we see the day drawing near. The king will return soon. In a blink, in the blink of an eye, the ball will drop to zero. The present form of this world will completely pass away and there will be the final kingdom. We will have won. There will be an exaltation that Adam, that none of us, only Christ, has ever experienced. And we will enter that exaltation. We will enter that kingdom. We will enter the new heavens and the new earth a time and a place that is beyond our imagination. And I tell you the truth, when we are there, no one's going to think about 2021 or 2022. This pandemic is going to be like whatever. When we see the Lord face to face, I can only imagine what you're going to think and, of course, what you're going to say to Jesus in the flesh. And I can only imagine what his first words will be to you. New words on that day. So let's get ready for this day, the day of the Lord. And may you be ever prepared to say, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word this morning. We thank you for this very, very important reminder about the most important day of our lives, the day of the Lord. Until that day comes, and we don't know when this day comes, we live in these days, these last days, and we ask and pray that you would help us, that by your grace you would strengthen us to live properly in these last days, to be ready, to prepare ourselves. Help us to think like that. Help us to be eschatologically minded, heavenly minded, more and more. Lord, we are bombarded with the things of this world. There are so many challenges. There are times of trials and testings. We are easily discouraged. We can be persecuted, of course. We can suffer. We are tempted to turn back like Lot's wife. We could eat and drink and live our own lives. Lord, we don't want to do that. Help us, Father, to carry our cross daily and follow Jesus. Help us, Father, to say, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.